Okay, so let's talk about titrations and neutralization reactions. So if you didn't notice already, um, acids and bases, when they combine, when an acid and base combine together, they neutralize one another. Uh, so acid plus base gives you a neutral salt and water, uh, typically. Okay. Uh, we can use this technique called a titration, uh, which is a neutralization reaction that's performed in the lab. And we're looking for an unknown molarity or concentration of acid or base. Okay. As long as we know the uh, concentration of one solution, we can determine the concentration of the other solution as long as we put in specific or we put in amounts of um, volumes of acid or base that we uh, know already. Okay, uh, so a titration is basically this. So here we have some hydrochloric acid. So I have some hydrochloric acid here. I know the molarity of this, but let's say hypothetically that we don't know the molarity of this uh, point, this, this hydrochloric acid solution. We know it's hydrochloric acid, but we don't know the molarity of it. So what we would do, oh, I forgot one more thing. What we would do, is we would take a known volume of this acid. So um, first of all, I would put my goggles on. If we're dealing with acid bases, we should be dealing with goggles. I know they're super, super cool goggles. Um, so we take some uh, of our acid. Hypothetically, we don't know what this is. However, we're going to put in a known amount. So we're going to put in uh, 10 milliliters, or actually, let's just do, yeah, let's sure, 10 milliliters, whatever. So I'm using a graduated cylinder here to measure 10 milliliters. Uh, you could do this with a graduated cylinder, or you could do it with with another uh, burette. So this is called a burette. Oh, I shouldn't go over what all these things are called. This is called a burette, this thing right here. Okay, on the top of it, I have a funnel. I know you can't really see that, but I have a funnel so that I can pour my solu other solution in there. Um, I'll go over that in a second. Um, so burette, burette clamp, um, ring stand. This thing that holds it up is the ring stand. This thing that's holding the burette is called a burette clamp. Pretty self-explanatory there. Okay. Uh, and then the there's a little lever here, and this lever, this lever will uh, when it's turned and it's parallel, it will release whatever's in here. Okay, and then when it's perpendicular, it shuts it off. Okay, so. Again, we're going to take a known volume of our unknown acid, so we don't really know. We don't really know what the the um, what the concentration of this acid is. I mean, I do know what it is, but let's just hypothetically say we don't. So we take some of that and we put it in a little beaker here. Actually, usually what we use is an Erlenmeyer flask, so I'll use the Erlenmeyer instead. So usually we put a little bit in the Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, then we add a little bit of distilled water. So if we add distilled water, we're not changing the number of moles of acid in here. So we'll know the number of moles of acid. We know that we use 10 milliliters. Okay, so we start with 10 milliliters. We have, um, we, we don't know the, actually, we don't know the molarity of it, but we do know we start with 10 milliliters. Okay. Uh, then we're just going to add, I usually just add a little bit of water to it just to make the volume slightly larger. It helps us see it a little bit better. Okay, uh, then we're going to add something called an indicator solution. So this is an indicator. It's called phenolphthalein. Now phenolphthalein, it is clear when it's in acidic solution. And then when it's in basic solution, it turns purple. Okay, so basically, or so as this, so when I add it to the, the acid, nothing happens. It's just, it's clear. Okay, but as I add base, to this, as I add base to this, eventually the, the solution is going to turn basic, and, and then it's going to change color. When it changes color, I know I've added more base than acid, 
and I know that now I have an equal amount of base and acid together in solution. Okay. Now I know what the concentration of my um, sodium hydroxide, so I have a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution in this burette here. I put a little bit in there already. Okay, let me uh, lift this up a little bit. So I put a little bit in already, um, and then basically all I would do is I take this little funnel on the top here and I put it in here, and I just pour it in. Okay, and then I fill up the burette with some 0.1 molar NaOH. Okay, so I know I have 0.1 molar NaOH in here. I don't know my molarity of my acid at the bottom, but if I know how much base I add and I know the molarity of it, I know how many moles of base I have, and I know that the moles of base have to equal the moles of acid when they neutralize each other. Okay, because acid plus base, you get a neutralization reaction. Any okay. one more thing I forgot. Okay, another thing that you use here is a piece of paper to help see it a little bit better. You're going to see a color change as you do this titration. Um, so, again, we're going to add base slowly until this turns color. Again, the indicator is going to indicate when the, the moles of acid equals moles of base. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take our initial volume of NaOH. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. I gotta grab a marker, I'm gonna grab a marker, hold on. <laughs> so we're gonna take our initial volume reading here. Um, I know it's hard, it's gonna be really hard to see for you guys, but there is a little meniscus here and you're gonna read it and this is at 17.4 milliliters. So our initial volume, so our, our volume initial of is uh, four, what did I say? 17.4 milliliters. So our initial volume is 17.4 milliliters. I know it doesn't matter if you can't really see that number. It's fine. It's a, I know it's kind of small there. 17.4 milliliters. Uh, and then we're going to add the NaOH until, until it turns pink. So I'm just going to add. I know we're going to have to add about 10 milliliters. So, so you, you can actually see that as you add it, you'll see it start to turn pink. I don't know if you all can see that it's kind of pink there, but then as soon as you stir it, it, the pink goes away. And that's because there's base coming in here, it's reacting with the phenolphthalein, but then it gets neutralized with the HCl as we stir it. Okay, so we're going to keep adding it, keep adding it. And again, I kind of know where it's going to be at because I know what the concentration of both of them are. Keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Now, typically in a titration, you're going to be doing three trials, three trials. And even it, within three trials, usually what I do is I do one throwaway trial. I do one off the one to start with, or I just add it really fast and see around where the neutralization will occur. Uh, now, I know that I know this one's going to be around 10 milliliters, probably a little bit more than that. I add a little bit more than 10 milliliters. Um, so I, I was adding it fast. Now, look, it's pink. Does that mean it's at the end? No, nope, because when I stir it, it goes away. Okay, again, because now the, new, the acid and base are, are neutralizing one another. Okay, so I'm just going to keep adding. And you're going to add until the pink stays, until it doesn't go away. Okay, so let's see, let's see. I'm going to add about 10 milliliters and then I'm going to do it slowly. So there's about 10 milliliters and it's still, so look, it's pretty pink, right? But when I start, oh, it didn't go away. <laughs> I went past the equivalence point or past the, the end point of the titration. That is too dark of a pink. I, 
I added too much. Um, but that's okay. It, it, it's it's going to give us a, a decent result anyway. So this is at um, 27.4. So our, our final volume is 27.4. So I, I basically added, I added 10 milliliters. So 27.4 minus 17.4, I get 10 milliliters. So I added 10 milliliters of the, the, the base. I know the base is 0 0.1 molar. Okay, and then I had 10 milliliters of the acid in solution. And I can find the molarity of it by this equation here. So it's the, the molarity times the volume of the, so it's molarity of the base times volume of base equals molarity of acid times volume of acid. And I just put, I switched them around, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, we can solve for molarity of acid. We do this math right here, and we'll get the molarity of the acid to be 0.1 molar, and that's what the molarity should be. Okay, that's what the molarity should be. That's what it is. Okay, so that's basically what a titration is. Okay, you take some acid, an, an unknown molarity of acid, but you know the volume of it, and then you take a known molarity of base, and you add it to it. Until you get a no, now you know the volume, until you reach an endpoint where the indicator changes color, and now you know that the acid is, has um, neutralized the base, so you know the, the molarities or the, or the number of moles are the same, and you can figure out the molarity of, of the, the acid now. Okay, and that is a titration. Okay, there's all different types of titrations, all different, um, you can do it for any types of acid, any type of bases. Okay, there's Weak acid, weak bases, titrations, there's all sorts of different ones. We're only really going to be concerned about strong acid, strong base titrations. Okay. So let's look at these notes here. So uh, the equivalent equivalence point is the point in the titration where the moles of acid equals the moles of base. Okay. So the moles of acid equals the moles of base. I should have made this big when I did this, shouldn't I? Should have done this. Ah, oh well. Live and you learn, right? Okay, so uh, again, equivalence point was moles of acid equals moles of base. Uh, and that, that's the point where you can determine the molarity of the unknown solution. All right. Uh, now, oftentimes, in order to figure out the equivalence point, what we do is we create a titration curve, and a titration curve plots the pH of a reaction on the y-axis versus the volume on the x-axis. We can use a pH probe. So a pH probe will tell us the pH of the solution at any given point in time. All right. Now pH is, again, we talked about the level of acidity or basicity of a solution. Okay, neutral is 7. So we're looking for the point at which uh, the pH is 7. At that point, then we reach the equivalence point. Moles of acid equals moles of base. It's neutral. Okay, they, they've canceled each other out. Okay, they cancel each other out. So here's a, an example of a titration curve here. Okay, now this one, the one in red, is what we did today, is what I just did, where we have a strong acid like HCl, and we're titrating it with a uh, strong base, so we're titrating it with uh, NaOH. So we actually, this is exactly the one I did. So the volume of 0.1 molar NaOH added on the bottom here, and then the pH over here. So in the beginning, you'll see that the pH is really low because HCl is a strong acid. It has a very, very low pH. It has a very, very low pH. As we add base to it, it becomes more and more basic until the point where we get the equivalence point, and now they neutralize one another. So the, the NaOH neutralizes the HCl, and then the pH is now 7. And then if we add a little more base, now NaOH is a strong base. So as we add more base, it gets stronger and stronger. It gets more and more basic. Okay, so you'll see it go all the way, jump really up high to a, a high pH. Okay, this is a strong acid-base titration. You're going to start with a 
a low pH because we have HCl at the bottom here. And then as it gets neutralized with NaOH, it neutralizes it and then NaOH takes over the solution. It's just basically NaOH in solution now. So it's very basic. Okay. Now, um, again, I said the acid-based indicators. So there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. There's strips that you can use. There's a universal indicator that you can use. And then there's phenolphthalein. So the phenolphthalein is the one I use today. But there's all sorts of other ones. There's methyl red, bromethylal blue, um, methyl orange, a bunch of different ones. Uh, this picture, my, uh, my icon, my icon is actually an example of an acid-based indicator. What I did was I put some um, universal indicator in a solution, and I believe it was like an NaOH solution. So there was it was very basic at the bottom, and then what I did was I just like kind of dripped acid on the top, so that the, the top was very acidic, but the bottom stayed basic. So I did it really slowly, and then as it sort of mixed, as the the acid went down, it kind of made all the different colors that the universal indicator can create. And that I thought that looked pretty cool. So that's is my icon on my uh, on my Gmail stuff here. So that's what you see all the time. You see universal indicator with several different layers of uh, different acidity and basicity. Okay. Okay. Now we use an acid base indicator to indicate the endpoint of a titration. So it changes color according to pH. So Phenolphthalein changes color at a pH of seven or eight. It turns it turns uh, that that purple color, that purple color. Okay, it's clear and then acid, and then it's purple in a base. All right. Um, the endpoint is when the, that color change states. When that color change occurs, it's called the endpoint. Now, in an ideal world, the endpoint and the equivalence point would be the same exact thing. Okay. So the endpoint equals the equivalence point. That's in an ideal world. However, that's not always really perfectly true. Uh, in reality, I probably added more NaOH than I needed to. So my molarity of acid is probably a little bit off. Okay, so the endpoint and, and, and equivalence point are not always exactly the same, but theoretically, they, that's what we want them to be, and that's what they should be. Okay, and that's what I said here, the difference between endpoint and equivalence point. Ideally, they should be the same thing. But the endpoint is when the, the color change occurs. The equivalence point is actually when the number of moles equals the, the number of moles of acid equals moles of base. Okay, when moles of acid and moles of base are equal. That's the equivalence point. Endpoint is when the color change occurs. Hopefully, they occur at the same time, but not always. Okay. Now, the... Uh, Neutralization reactions, you calculate, you can calculate molarity of acid or molarity of base or volume of acid or volume of base based on this, this uh, uh, equation right here. It looks kind of familiar, right? M1V1 equals M2V2. That's because it's very, very much the same, except now we're just talking molarity of acid times volume of acid equals molarity of base times volume of base. There is one little trick, though. If you have a diprotic acid, you'd have to multiply this side by two. So if you had like H2SO4, you'd multiply this by two. Okay, or H2CO3, you multiply this by two. Okay, if you had H3PO4, H3PO4 would be triprotic. You would multiply this side by three. So it's the number of H's in the acid times molarity of acid times volume of acid. Okay. And that's equal to molarity of base times volume of base times the number of OHs. So we're only going to be doing OH and H. You know, we talked about conjugate acid base pairs yesterday. We're not going to do anything that doesn't have OH and H in it. It's going to be H and OH. All right. So OHs, number of OHs. So like uh, lithium hydroxide is just one. But you get something like barium hydroxide. Barium hydroxide has two hydroxides to it. So you put a two here. Okay, so really, really just the same thing we did in the past, just now we're talking about molarity of acid and molarity of base, okay, instead. So we look at the uh, worksheet here. The first part is pretty self-explanatory. You can watch the video again or you can 
just look at the notes and, and answer those questions at the, at the top there. Um, and then for these ones, you're just using molarity of acid times molar volume of acid equals molarity base times volume base. Um, oh, I forgot to put the number of H's and the number of OH's. So like number one is just one to one. This is one. Number three, though, you have to be careful. Number three, you see that we have CaOH2 and we have H2SO4. So both of these are multiplied by two. This is two OHs and two H's. Okay? So just be careful. But they kind of cancel each other out, so it doesn't really matter. It's so like three and four, they cancel each other out. Um, you just got to be really careful when you get to ones like, let's see, are there any? Like this one here. This one, number nine, got to be really careful. This is two H's and only one OH. Okay, this one here is two H's and only one OH. So you got to pay attention to those. Okay, this one too, H3PO4, and then sodium hydroxide NaOH, just one. Okay, so just like you did before, M1V1 equals M2V2, you're doing the same thing. M, molarity of acid and volume of acid equals molarity of base and volume of base. Okay, so make sure you multiply the number of H's and the number of OH's on either side. 